When we're ready to go ahead and prepare our denture for our zest and compass case, first and foremost, we want to make sure that the denture and the prosthesis is in good shape. Minimal metal on the inside of the denture, a well-fitting denture, and also one that more or less is about right for the patient. We can make some changes associated with the incisal edge position, the tooth color, the tooth shape, but for the most part we want to make sure that the centric and vertical is about right and the denture fits pretty well. Typically this is going to be something like an immediate denture prosthesis, one that I delivered to the patient at the time of extraction. And now we're ready to go ahead and place our Lodi dental implants and go ahead and convert them on over with a 3D printed Absolute Forever denture. If I don't have a well-fitting denture, it is a good idea for us to go ahead and do a reline, either a laboratory or soft reline material, prior to going ahead and making a comb beam of the patient uh, with the prosthesis. Also, you can go ahead and use something like a PBS impression material, like from Zest Dental Solutions, or you can use a radiographic PBS impression material here called Green Moose. Both of those would work on the inside of the patient's denture. Most importantly, we have to make sure that whenever we're placing PBS on the inside of the denture, you put it back in the mouth so that way the patient is border molded it at the correct vertical dimension with what's called a closed mouth realign impression. Impression material goes in here, you mix, goes into the mouth, patient bites down, squeezes, lips, 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 slight border molding, we can remove and then proceed with the next stage. When we're ready to go ahead and prepare the prosthesis, we do need to place radiographic markers on the prosthesis. Typically, the radiographic markers are going to be something like this from the Suremark company. There's a few different types that you can go ahead and utilize for this procedure. The classic Suremark has this kind of oval-like type of a feel to it, and these are two millimeter spheres on a sticker. These do work pretty well, but they are a little bit large for most denture prostheses. So if you have them laying around, you can use them, but I don't recommend these larger stickers. They have two different dental mark stickers. So the ones that are meant for dentistry have much smaller stickums, as you can see here. So I pull this out just a little bit. Then you can go ahead and see here, we've got a blue type of ball and also a clear type of ball. The clear one is two millimeters and the blue one is 2.3 millimeters. Either one of these will work perfectly fine for your Encompass case. I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate with the 2.0 millimeter stickers. First step is I'm gonna go ahead and remove this from our little sticker. And I typically wanna go ahead and place a series of these around the periphery of the denture. Prior to placing this on the denture, it's a really good idea to make sure that your denture is thoroughly dry prior to going ahead and um, us attaching them to the complete denture. As a general rule, you wanna go ahead and you make sure that you've got enough of these stickers, three of them typically here on the facial. So I'm gonna place those here, here, and here. And continuing forward, One here on the periphery of the border over here. And then it's also a good idea to go ahead and place two to four of them on the inside of the palette. Trying to get that to stick down nice. Depending upon the size and the arch of the palette. This now has the appropriate number of stickers. Ideally, you may or may not need this many number of stickers. However, it's still a good idea to take a bunch of them and scatter them around on the denture and the dental prosthesis so that way it can make it work really well. The key is, is as I show you a variety of different places because I find the palette is a much easier place to put the stickers. So if I can only place a couple out here, like if this one doesn't really stick that great because I've got a lot of festooning or something of that nature, Typically, you just need somewhere between four and six of these stickers. I have a total of seven of them here on this denture prosthesis, but this might be overkill for the vast majority of clinicians. Typically, somewhere in that four to six range scattered around the prosthesis is more than sufficient. 
Now we're ready to go ahead and take this on over and place it back into the patient's mouth and then cone beam scan the patient wearing this in, in, in his or her mouth. Over at our cone beam machine, we have everything now set up so that way we can make a cone beam CBCT scan of the patient wearing the prosthesis. Typically our cone beam scan is going to be something in the range of a 12 by 9 uh, field of view or something larger. Ideally we want to capture from more or less the uh, top portion of the maxillary bony ridge right around where it intersects with the nasal cavity as well as just below the mandibular ridge. So approximately like this. And then from the front back we want approximately like there. So the 12 by 9 more or less captures the vast majority of what we need. In addition, if you have a larger field of view, that's perfect as well. If you have a 15 by 15 or similar, that's also a great choice for going ahead and making a cone beam of a patient wearing the prosthesis. My cone beam is set up. Everything is now ready for me to go ahead and take the patient into the cone beam machine. With the patient wearing the prosthesis, I also have one, two, three cotton rolls here on the buckle of the prosthesis. And ideally, it's still a good idea to have the patient biting on two cotton rolls while you're doing the cone beam scan. My patient would walk into the comb beam and bite on the fork and the stick and my assistant would go ahead and make the comb beam scan of the patient wearing the prosthesis in their mouth, whether it's a hard relined, soft relined, or a PBS impression. After making the comb beam scan, my patient steps back. I make sure I fully capture the comb beam scan and I don't have any artifacts in the comb beam such as patient movement or double movements of the prosthesis or something acting a little bit goofy like that. If the patient moved during the actual scan, then maybe we want to recreate the scan also. You'll see double images or ghosting if the patient does move. We have to watch that because as we know, a lot of our overdenture patients tend to be a little bit older on average, and those patients have a little trouble standing up into the cone beam machine. Once we've captured a, a scan number one, which is our cone beam scan of the patient wearing the pr prosthesis, we can then remove the prosthesis from the mouth, have the patient sit back in the operatory, and we can make an optical scan of that patient's denture. As mentioned, optionally, you can also go ahead and take that patient's denture, pop it into the cone beam scanner with like a foam or a styrofoam plate, propping it up so that way it's not sitting directly on the actual chin cup of our cone beam machine. That is an optional scan, something that is not required. The required scans are a cone beam of the patient wearing the prosthesis and an intraoral or desktop optical scan of the prosthesis.